Welcome back to part five of this video introducing Chain of Command, the new platoon levels that we will be releasing this summer. In part four, we started to look at a game in play and some of the decisions made by the players during the first turn, which ran for 13 phases of play. We saw the devastating effect of German firepower as it blunted the British advance, and then saw the British platoon sergeant take control of his men as they were pinned down under fire. Now, let's quickly recap just where we were. Here's the table as we left it. On the road, the British have got one section here. And in the field, we have another section here, which has just been rallied by the sergeant. We can see the Churchill tank moving up here as well. At this stage, uh, the British have realised that an advance on the right is unlikely, but he uh, has uh, succeeded in finding two German squads on that side of the table. So his plan is now to push forward with his tank to engage then. At this point in time, he's still got, the British player has still got one section as yet uncommitted to the table, along with a Piat team, two inch mortar, and the platoon commander, the lieutenant, who at this point in time is still back marshalling his troops, ready to commit them to the battle where he feels they're gonna be most advantageously deployed. The Germans have got one squad here, with the machine gun team in the orchard covering the road and the rifle team slightly further forward, engaging the British across the field. Their second squad is over to our right on the road, on the track here, and they have the SDKFZ 2509 on the road, as we can see. At this moment in time, they've got one squad of infantry uncommitted, one Panzerschreck team, and the NCO, who is their platoon commander. So, let's get started with the second turn. The first phase is with the Germans. The Germans have rolled a pair of fives, four, three, and two. Now that increases their chain of command dice up to, well, the first one goes to six, and that becomes an active chain of command dice, and the second one now goes up to one. Um, the uh, half-track fires, killing a couple of rifles uh, on the, co on the uh, corner and the section on the road fires but actually they have no effect. So the phase now of play now moves over to the British. Uh, the British roll 6, 5, 3, 2 and 2. Now their 6 tells them the next phase is going to be German. The 5 increases their chain of command dice up to 4. And um, the tank moves forward, and because it's moving, it's uh, firing its machine guns, and remarkably effectively, actually, in that section there, that it, in that uh, German squad it targets there, it actually kills three of the riflemen and inflicts some shock on the machine gun team. Um, and uh, while that's going on, the British take the opportunity to withdraw their sections back down the road, away from the half track, and also withdraw their section in the field. Uh, that's occurring on the three and the two. Uh, sorry, the three is what allowed the uh, tank to, to activate and fire. The two twos are what allowed the two sections to activate and move back. Now on to the next phase, which is uh, a German phase. The Germans roll six, four, three, two, and one. And they use the three to reverse the 250, the half track, into the cover of the building because that's now visible from where the tank is. The tank and the half-track being slightly higher than your average infantryman have got better visibility, logically, across the intervening terrain. But the uh, half-track with its 20 mil cannon doesn't really feel like taking on the Churchill, so that's reversing back there on the two. The two twos allow the two infantry sections, two German infantry sections, to retire. The one um, the <coughs> nearest the orchard has retired back very successfully into the orchard, but the one on the road has not moved as quickly as the uh, German commander would have liked and is still there uh, exposed somewhat in the road. Uh, so the next phase then we move on to is the British, and the British rolling 5, 4, 3, 2 and 1. Uh, they increase their chain of command ice up to 5. Uh, the tank uh, fires using the three to activate and uh, it's actually relatively ineffective but um, more effective has been the one where the British player has deployed its two inch mortar 
and that opens fire dropping around very neatly onto the retiring Germans and interestingly um, it actually wounds a German NCO who's commanding the German Gefreiter who's commanding that squad and knocks him out um, this is the first point in the game where we've looked at force morale at the start of a game both sides roll for their force morale the German force morale started off at nine and, and now, uh, because of a rather poor role in this situation, their force morale has dropped down to seven. Nothing to get worried about at this stage, but nevertheless, it's the first time that we've looked at force morale. And um, we'll see how that affects the game as we carry on playing. Um, so the uh, British are using the two uh, to activate... Um, uh, one of their sections which is moving across um, into the field and the platoon sergeant has shouted across and put the um, uh, Bren team which is on the road on overwatch which we can see by the green dotted line so if any Germans start moving down from that direction they're going to be able to take them on and whilst their rifle team as I say has moved to the left into the field uh, to the left of the road with a view to advancing on the German held wheat field. Now we move on to the next phase which is German. And the Germans have rolled a pair of sixes. Now this is the first time this has happened in this game which is quite unusual because it's been we've been quite a quite a way through. That means that the next phase of play is going to be a German phase of play. So the Germans can activate their forces and they've rolled a handful of twos there. They've got three twos which allows them to activate any three infantry squads. Um, they do that with drawing one, the one that was on the track, back across the field. And they also move the uh, rifle team of the infantry uh, squad, which is in the orchard, across towards the main road, where it's looking to move out towards the wheat field as well. Now, the Germans, knowing that they have got the next phase of play, are keen to get their Gefreiter back into the game. And he, uh, his wound resulted in him being knocked out until the end of the turn. So the Germans are using their chain of command ice there. We put a cross through the green active chain of command ice to end the turn at that point. At that moment, all overwatches come off. So the British Bren team covering the road, that is no longer on overwatch. Any units which were pinned down but who have now had shock reduced can remove that shock. Uh, but that isn't, isn't applicable in this situation. So the Germans have ended this turn and they then immediately get the first phase of the next turn because they roll the two sixes. So that was turn two. The British have successfully disengaged in the centre thanks to the actions of their platoon sergeant and their tank has clearly got the Germans worried and starting to withdraw from the more exposed positions. That was a much shorter turn than the first one with just five phases of play. The question now must be whether the Germans can take on the tank. They're by no means toothless. Each squad has a Panzerfaust and the Panzerschreck team is still uncommitted. However, the British player is playing a sensible and cautious game and keeping his tank out of harm's way. It's all shaping up for an exciting next turn. We hope you'll join us to watch that. So, see you there.